Hey everybody, thank you all for tuning in. My name is Sam, I am the superhero. I am a psychic medium, and that's what makes me a superhero. So go ahead and like the video, and hit that subscribe button because we love superheroes over here. So there is absolutely nothing that you have to do to get a free psychic reading. Just tune into my channel, and if the message is for you, you'll know it. Please share this video with your family and friends, as one of these messages may be for them. And now, for my first message. This message is for Daniel, and your messenger is your Uncle Henry. Uh, Uncle Henry passed away. He's on the other side. I see that you two were close, and Henry says that he always used to tell you there's just something special about you ever since you were a little boy. He says you know what it is. He says he now knows what it is. You two were already connected in a parent and child dynamic to where he was uh, your father, but that happened in another incarnation. Um, he also says that this message will be tough for you to process as you do not believe in this type of stuff. So you guys moved to Salt Lake City, Utah from Delaware. I'm getting that it was a family move. It wasn't just the two of you. I'm even hearing that your grandma moved too. It was supposed to be for better job opportunities there. Henry's showing me construction work and I feel like he passed over as a result of a work-related injury, but it was an accident. And there was some kind of struggle with either workers' compensation and insurance because of this accident. He, said you, he says that you never really got over it, and he hates that your life took such an awful blow when he left you there, or when he left you here. He also says that you have a girlfriend now, and you won't let her really love you because you're afraid if she gets too close, you could forever lose her too. But the thing is, Daniel, you haven't lost your Uncle Henry because he watches over you all the time. Um, when you talk, he hears you, and he even responds, but you can't hear him. He says he loves you, champ, and when it comes to your girlfriend, it's okay to let her in. He says that he's got your six. Light and love to you, my friend. Okay, this is the second message. Uh, it's from Yolanda. So Yolanda identified as Hispanic and grew up in the Dominican Republic. She was in her mid 40s to early 50s when she passed on. She saw, she's showing me an injury to her left eye and it was that eye that was lighter than the right eye. It looks like a light blue color. She says that she was blind, blind in her left eye, but she could see about 60% out of her right eye. At the time of her death, she lived in New York she was, um, she had a heavy, raspy sounding voice, and she says Pablo took her car right before the murder happened. He said that he would be right back. He was supposed to be going to the Greyhound to pick up his girlfriend, Alyssa, or Alicia. She says a man came in the back door with a hammer looking for Pablo, and he began interrogating her, asking her a lot of questions like where Pablo was and where the money was. She says it was a young guy, and he was so impatient that she couldn't speak fast enough for him. Yolanda says that she could tell from the look in his eyes that he didn't mean Pablo any good, and if he caught him, he was probably going to kill him. So she lied, and she said that Pablo took her car and left town. The attacker suffered from some form of ADHD or hypersensitivity disorder, and before Yolanda could blink, he was on top of her, attacking her with the hammer. She fought back as best she could, but the young guy was really strong, and he completely overpowered her. Now, when it was all said and done, the young guy left, and Yolanda was able to call the police. An ambulance came and got her. Uh, she remembers still being conscious in the ambulance, but by the time that the ambulance made it to the hospital, it was too late. Her attacker was a young black male. Uh, he was known to the community, and he had a problem with drug addiction. He was in and out of jail for crimes largely related to drug addiction, such as theft, robbery, breaking and entering, and so forth. Police actually suspected that he was involved in Yolanda's murder, but shortly after Yolanda died, so did he. Um, he overdosed in an alley not too far from Yolanda's sister's place. So this message is for Pablo. Yolanda wants you to know that it's not your fault. She knows that you blame yourself because you used to sell drugs and you feel you never should have sold to the attacker. But she wants you to understand that it was her time to go. And even if the attacker changed, she still would have departed at that time. Uh, she says, keep praying to Santa Maria because she sees you when you do. 
but just know that she's okay and she says that you will be okay too. Yolanda says that uh, you still have nightmares and when you do, you pick up the bottle to drink. So she says, please don't do that because it's not helping and it's gonna get worse in the long haul. If you keep that up, you'll start having GI issues, gastrointestinal issues, and it will get worse. So she says for you to start running again and to look into softball. Again, Yolanda says that she is okay. She wants to stress that, okay? Pablo, she is okay, and that you are going to be okay too. Light and love to you, my friend. Okay, guys, this is my last message of the day. So this is for Shonda. Your name is Shonda. You work in a pharmacy or you are a pharmacist, and you live near Clear Lake. There is a lake or pond or some kind of body of water that is near your job. You go there on your lunch break and you stare into the water and you think of your brother who has passed away. His name is Joshua, but you call him Josh. He was your baby brother. Uh, I'm getting that he was hit by a vehicle while you were supposed to be watching him. He was a teenager at the time, maybe 16, 17 years old. He used to do tricks on his bike like popping wheelies and spinning around in circles with no hands sometimes. He was really good at it. And he liked to watch the types of shows to where the guys drive the dirt bikes and they do the stunts in the air. He felt like he could do that, especially with practice. So he would practice up and down the street. Now, the vehicle that hit him belonged to a major brand, something along the lines of Amazon, UPS, FedEx, or maybe another brand that is popular in your city or state. So it may not be known at the national level, but is very popular in your community. Um, I see that your family filed a lawsuit against this business, and I just want you to know that you will win in the end. Even though this business has dug up so much dirt on your brother, as much as they could find, your family will win that lawsuit. And I'm getting that. Uh, there will be a settlement outside of court that seals the deal for this case to be closed. Shonda, just Joshua knew how to be careful when he rode his bike, and for the most part, he did just that. However, in this case, he felt that it was his last ride. That's partially why he kept on nagging you before he left. He says that he was purposely trying to get on your nerves, so you'd want him away from you. He says he knew you had to study and you needed some peace and quiet anyways. But earlier that day, before he uh, left to ride his bike, there was a serious moment that you two shared when Joshua, he took something from your hands and you tried to get it back and he stopped and he looked at you directly in your eyes in a way that made you pause. And he, as he'd never like really looked at you like that before. Then he smiled and gave you the item back and you reminded him that just because he got taller and a bit older, that did mean that you couldn't take him down. Joshua enjoyed the back and forth banter you two shared. And he said that his sister is very beautiful. So Joshua's in a good place, Shonda, and your family will win that lawsuit. Light and love to you, my friend. So in closing, I just want to say pay attention to the signs. If you think one of these messages are for you, watch the news, scroll on social media, or listen to the radio. When messages are for you, they tend to repeat themselves over and over again. You will literally feel it in your spirit if it is for you, so let that be your confirmation. And if you didn't get a message this time, come on back next time because you may be in line for a message. Okay, guys, that's all I have for you for today. I hope that you all have enjoyed it. Please don't forget to share this video so the family and friends get the messages. And until next time, remember, anybody can be a superhero, even you.